Okay, in order to use Django, we need a text editor, but we also need a command line in order to run commands. And if you're on a Mac or Linux, you're gonna use the terminal. You're probably familiar with that, hopefully. But on Windows, we're gonna use something called the PowerShell. Now there's a couple of command lines in Windows. There's the old DOS command prompt that you may be familiar with. And there's also the PowerShell that you may not be familiar with. And we're gonna use the PowerShell. It's a lot like the Mac terminal. In fact, we're gonna use a lot of the same commands in it. And the PowerShell lets us use those same commands. And if you don't know what any of this is, don't worry this is not hard. We're just going to be doing a couple of things on it and I'll walk you through it. It's dead simple. So go to your Windows Start menu. This may not appear on the screen. It's kind of off to the corner here. And just go down to the bottom where the little search thing is and type in PowerShell, all one word. And the first thing that pops up, it's going to say Windows PowerShell. That's what you want, but don't just click on it, right click on it, and then click Run as Administrator. So we need to do this the first time or two in order to set some settings up. After that, we don't have to run it as Administrator, but the first couple of times we do, or at least the first time or so. So, so this is what we have right here. You can run commands and do all the things, clear the screen. So you can see right now we're in the C Windows system folder. I'm gonna click, uh, type in CD, which stands for change directory. And I'm gonna just bop over to the C drive now. So you can see we're on C. Now, the first time we run this, we need to type in this command in order to allow us to run our Django commands anywhere. So basically you just type in capital SET set and then a dash and then capital E for execution. E -X E C U T I O N execution capital P policy all one word and then a space and then a capital U unrestricted unrestricted it's gonna say, are you sure? Click yes. Okay, so this just lets us run commands in any directory, basically, using this PowerShell. So I can clear the screen. So one thing we wanna do right away is type in Python-V, capital V. And you can see it says Python version 3.6.5. This tells us that Python is installed, it's running, everything's good to go. We can do pip-v, and my little antivirus is running to make sure this is okay. Yours may or may not do that, it's no big deal. And okay, it shows yes, we do have pip, so that's important. Next, I wanna type in pip freeze. And what this does is it shows us all of the things that are currently installed on our system. And I have this virtual environment because I've installed this previously. You probably don't have that because you haven't installed virtual environment yet. So one of the first things we need to do is install virtual environment. And what this is, is virtual environment creates little walled gardens inside of our computer. So inside of a virtual environment, we can install all kinds of stuff. We can use Python, we can use Django, we can set all kinds of crazy uh, settings and things. And it keeps it separate from the rest of our computer. So if we screw something up inside of there, it doesn't hurt the rest of the computer. It'll also allow us to use different versions of things inside the virtual environment. So if we wanna use an older version of Python, we can do that inside the virtual environment very, very easily. If we wanna use a different version of Django, we can do that inside the virtual environment. If we don't do that, then whatever we have installed on our computer is what we have to use. So right now we have Python 3.6 or whatever. We just have to use that. You can imagine being in a situation where you're working for a company, they've got an old website that's running on Python 2. You need to download and install Python 2. Well, you can't really do that unless you set up a virtual environment. So it's just best practices whenever you're coding anything to keep all your code together and sort of walled away from the rest of your computer. So we're gonna use that in this course. It's very, very easy. And in fact, it doesn't take any effort to set it up whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in make dir and let's create a directory where we keep all of our code stuff. And I'm just gonna call it code. So now we can CD into code, and you can see we're now in the code directory. And if we type LS to list all the stuff in there, there's, there's nothing in there. So now we wanna install virtual environment. And like I said, I've already got it on my computer, but you probably don't. So just type in pip install virtual env. env stands for environment. And this is, it's already satisfied. It's already been installed for mine. Yours, you're, you're gonna get a bunch of stuff that's gonna scroll onto the screen. Just let it do its thing and you should be good to go. So now if we type in LS, still nothing there, clear the screen. So let's start our virtual environment. We need to actually tell our program where we want our virtual environment to be. And let's just put it in this code directory. So we type in virtual, env, and then the period. The period just means do it right here in this directory. So if we do this, it's gonna take a second to, cause it's gonna install a bunch of stuff. It's installing setup tools, it's installing pip again, for some reason, this wheel thing, I don't even know what that is. But it might take a couple seconds, but boom, now we're done. Now if we click LS, we can see there's all kinds of stuff in this folder. So that's very, very cool. So we've got everything installed, now we have to turn it on. And to do that, we just type in period, 
slash, and you can see this scripts directory right here. You need to access that. And then inside of the scripts, there's a file called activate. And boom, our virtual environment is now running. And we can tell that because it's this little code thing is in parentheses. And that's just the name of this directory. And this is just the format it shows us when a virtual environment has been turned on. So we can see all the files are still there. We can go pip freeze again to see what's in this directory. And I'm getting my antivirus thing popping up here. You may or may not get that. And you can see nothing is showing. When we did it before, it showed that virtual environment was installed. It's not showing anything in here now because this is a new thing. We've created a new virtual environment and inside that environment, there's nothing. So we need to now install Django and all the things that we're gonna need to do that. So to get out of your virtual environment, you just type in deactivate. There we go. And you can see this little code parentheses thing disappeared and you're back in the realm of normal computing. So to get back in there again, we just type in that script slash activate and you can do forward slash or backslash. It really doesn't matter. They're the same for this. So that's our virtual environment. And now we are ready to install Django and that's what we'll do in the next video.